Boys on the block in the field, on the screens, in your ear. Turn me up, listen up real clear. City boys, we known to keep it real. City boys. Welcome to the City Boy Podcast. Straight out of the city of Austin. We back at you, episode nine. This is where we talk about the guy stuff in our city. I'm your boy, Jameer Godhart. I'm here with my dog. Boy, Tino. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, VSCutino44. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Edwin. I'm back here. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, first off, before we get into it, I want to say a big thank you to all the followers. 100 plus on TikTok, 100 plus on Instagram. 50 plus on YouTube and Facebook. Yes, sir. Hey, man, we appreciate Woo! the support. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Continue to grow on all platforms, you know. And so whether you're a, you know, just a random stranger that ran into our content or a personal friend of ours, we appreciate the love and support, and we're going to continue to grow from here. Definitely. Just Keep got- engaging with us, man. We'd love to hear y'all talking about us, talking back and forth with us, and and the comments, man, we love that engagement. So stay involved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whether so we agree or disagree, we appreciate the engagement. Yes, sir. Now let's get into it. Let me talk to you. Austin FC, our city soccer team, our only professional team. Big size only. Slow start. Very slow you know, start. I feel like trash. Oh, yeah. I just feel like the team right now is in shambles. Like we've been saying since, yeah. man, a couple of episodes ago, bro, like, this team is not built for this Josh Wolf system. And what's happening out there on the field uh-huh. is really just sad, man. Like, we're, we don't, we're not this bad, bro, but we just have the wrong man in charge, bro. And we just have the incorrect system in play. Mm-hmm. And it's just not, it's not working for us, bro. We're literally worst team in the league right now. It's still early. It's zero one and one start. It's a slow start. But I'm. Uh, I guess I'm optimistic, man. I feel like if I they can get it, yeah. the chemistry yeah. going, they can. It's it's still early. Uh, yes, of course, I admit the first two games they looked like butt and should have lost the tie. They should have lost the tie, most definitely. But it's still early, and I'm still hoping y'all can please turn it around so we can celebrate. We are gonna celebrate regardless, <laughs> but please turn it around. Nah, yeah, bro. Because I'm not gonna lie, like you know, if you went to the first game. You know, the atmosphere, everybody was looking forward to the season. But then as the game went on, like, too many missed opportunities. Um, we were getting our ass kicked with uh, possession. Yeah. And it just felt like, like kind of like what everyone's saying. Like, this, like we're, we're not that bad. Uh-huh. But but we're playing like we're the worst team. So, it's it's, wolf, it's, yeah, it's Wolf. It's um, like, look, it's, if you've been watching this team like we've had for the last couple of years. Yeah. This is not, you know, this is not new, man. Like, the trajectory the team finished with last year, it's been on the decline, bro. Yeah. Like, we have not seen an improvement. Yeah. And that's what upsets me the most is, like, I had a whole offseason to kind of come in and bring in some players to kind of rejuvenate well, we this. We talked about this. Yes. They didn't make any big They didn't do shit, bro. Like, they didn't reju- rejuvenate nobody. Like, it's the yeah. same old core. And we said it from the beginning, too, when we was talking about that. Mm-hmm. It can't be all on Drusy. It cannot. Yeah, it, it can. cannot. Not that type of player. Exactly. Not it, that type of talent. It cannot be all on him, bro. And what's gonna end up happening, bro? Is you know, there's gonna be civil war in, in the stands because, like, yeah. right now, yeah. f- fans are hot. Right now, fans are pissed. I get both sides. I do. But like, man, when the the amount of money that we spent going to these games, the amount of money we spent at that stadium, bro, like, it adds up, bro. Like. What the hell am I paying all this for if yeah. if yeah. shit's gonna be trash? Like it's it's horrible. It's a horrible situation right yeah, now. It's funny. It's funny that you brought up fans because I, w- I wanted to say this to our Austin SC fans. Like guys, it's okay to hold this team accountable. You yes. know, we yes. can't we can't just pretend nothing's wrong with this team. Yes. We're gonna keep bouncing back. Whatever you know, it's okay to hold your fan base and the team accountable because yes. that shows you care, you know. Definitely. We can't we can't and ignore but, the red flags, you know. But even when you think about that, maybe some people they be they like the clout that they think they get from being involved with the team. 
like they go to all these events they get they found a new friend family we per se and then some of these people get the opportunity to meet the players meet people mm -hmm. in the organization yeah. and that when you get in that good that's when you kind of like hesitate criticizing them yeah because like <laughs> y'all put me on and i'm supposed to be your biggest supporter but support also means to let people know when they fucking up. But that, mm -hmm. that means they fake fan, bro. See, like, right, That's what I'm saying. One of the things that I've been seeing on Twitter, especially after the first game, homie was calling out the supporter section saying, like, you know, um, why are we paying this much? Or why are we out? Why are we celebrating when sh the performance is ass? Yeah. But people have to understand, like, when you're in the supporter section, That's no matter how ass we are, you yeah. are there to support the you team. Gotta show out. That's yeah. the role that you are. That's every place in the world. Yeah. They have a support section. That's what you do. Now, if you don't want to do that, get the fuck out. Go sit somewhere yeah. else. Go sit somewhere else. Right. In fact, if you're so if you're bitching and moaning about like prices and why am I paying for this, go sit at home, man. You're not a real fan. Like I get it. I get both sides. Like I'm frustrated too. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, it's simple things. Support section supports. Yeah. We're losing 4-0. We're, We're losing 4-0. Exactly. You're supposed to be in there. You're supposed to be lit no matter what the yes. score is. 4-0. You still support. Otherwise, like you just said, buy tickets somewhere fucking else. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, bro. Like, and I'm not going to lie. Like, everyone was defeated in the first game, bro. Like, everybody was down. I'm not going to lie. Everybody was looked defeated if, they, if we're being honest. But we should still show some encouragement, some support. Like, hey, we might be ass, but like, let's chill. Let's do something. Like, let's try yeah. and cheer this team on. But in reality, though, this system isn't working with Joff Wolf. We need to find a new coach. Um, the sooner the better, in my opinion. Fuck waiting off season to make these changes. Like, it's not gonna work. We're 29th, or we're literally dead play, dead last in ball possession, ball scoring. Bro, last game. It wasn't until the 70th minute. Austin had a shard on target, bro. Come on. That's embarrassing. What you doing? Stop. Stop. Just stop. Well, me personally with Wolf, you know, I, I mean, yeah, he's obviously in the hot seat. You know, so if we, if we don't do if we don't do anything this this season, yeah, he's definitely got to go. But in my personal opinion that, you know, just coming from someone that's not a fan of making coaching changes midseason, uh, mid season, mm -hmm. um, I would just wait. Until like Austin FC is like for sure out of the playoff race. Yes. And once we get to that point, yeah, Wolf got to go. It's just, it's just the fan base ain't going to be too patient, bro. Like if we don't start seeing. That's what I'm saying. It's going to like, like you said, how everybody was deflated in the first game. That's because we already dealt with bullshit at the end of the last yeah, season. Exactly. Yeah. So you get all excited, excited, ready for this new season. Hopefully we turn it around. Everybody's hype. It's the first game. You're going to get the biggest turnout. So then. To see bullshit, you just get deflated. Like you yeah, said, you yeah. just like this shit again, bro. Yeah, like exactly. I'm not trying to go through this shit all over <laughs> hey, again. Bro. But on on the flip side, the more Austin FC sucks, the cheaper the tickets cost. So yeah, I mean, so take that's a the... little take one of y'all little shotties out there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll, end, I'll end it with this. Like um, it's like Tino said, it's okay to hold to hold this team accountable. Mm -hmm. I want everybody who is a true supporter to. Keep checking them, like, yo, what yeah. you doing? Like, hey, because yeah, yeah. it, sh it shows you care. You make the yeah. Exactly. And speaking of that, like today, Drucy says some shit that like the fan base is soft. Mm -hmm. Now, to He's me, soft. He's I'm soft. not. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> bro? <laughs> he last year when he made his Twitch channel, or whatever, motherfuckers were practicing, bro. Like, people were practicing because content was practicing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I go on Twitch, I subscribe. I'm like, yo, why aren't you at practice? And he blocked you. And he blocked me, bro. <laughs> and you, you're gonna call this fan base People off. Got moderators, you know? but listen, you're gonna call this fan base off. You can't be. You gotta take that shit, bro. Like, come on. Like, there's been several people that have called out these players, mm -hmm. and they get blocked for just speaking the truth. Now, nah, fuck that. Like, right now is the time to keep this team accountable and keep them on check. Cause like, we're spending our money, we're spending all this energy, you know. Out here, like, we gotta make some changes. Accountability is exactly. the theme. Yeah. Exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. Like, hey. Get your shit together, bro. Ain't nobody hating on you. We just saying you need to play better. That's what I'm you know saying. What I'm saying? It, it, that like going back to what I said, like it shows you care. You know, like we're not we're not Argentina, okay? <laughs> we're not okay. That's facts. <laughs> Them boys are crazy over there. But we want this team to succeed, and we'll literally would do anything to make sure y'all 
know that we watching y'all and y'all fuck exactly. up. I'm going to be in those DMs hitting y'all up. Like, I'll be in those DMs. Don't worry. Nah, we ain't going to come out with no death threats or anything. But, but I'll be like, what the fuck was yes. that, Rigoni? What the fuck was that, Ring? Same on people who do do death threats. Yes. But just to wrap this topic up, real quickly, do y'all see it? I know it's, it's only been two games. So do y'all see this potentially turning around real quick? No. No? No. Yeah. It, I, I lean more towards no, but I would. I, I need more, more games you know, from Austin FC before I can... <laughs> Decide, like, oh yeah, dude, I've, seen, I've seen plenty. Uh, I'm very <laughs> optimistic, so I still say no. I don't think he's right. Around. <laughs> but let's move on to the NFL. Yes, sir. The off season is blazing hot right now. We just got out of the NFL draft combine. People showing up. Texas Longhorns. Hey. You know what I'm saying? We showing up. Xavier Worthy, man. What Shout are you running? Four Shout two out to one. a 4 two, one. Yeah, 4 and two, that's one. the fastest. The fastest, the fastest, bro. Yeah. So what do y'all think he, he'll make an impact on the next level? I believe so. Um, like, you know, he still has to show consistency with his, you know, catching ability because, you know, at Texas, he missed some catches that were like, like, bro, come on. Like, you got to catch that. But I know, you know, the NFL Combine in general, like, that's what boosts players um projection so i think this boosts xavier worthy uh to for sure being a first round uh draft pick and i think a team like hell maybe even kansas city yeah. can definitely look into him and get him see now that's where i thought so the pick that kansas city has the last pick because they won the super bowl said yeah. but anyway um i thought xavier worthy was going to go there or you know mitchell but now that you know Mitchell had a three, four, three, five, four, three, five, and you know Worthy broke the record, I feel like them boys just elevated their draft stock yeah. to probably top twenty picks. So I don't I think see that, yeah. I don't think those players are going to be available for a receiver needy team like the Chiefs unless they trade up. Yeah. But man, they, bro, when John Ross did that bullshit forty, he got drafted ninth overall, bro. Yeah, and he ended up being a bust. That, that, but that's a good that's a good thing that you mentioned that because that translates to like another question, like the NFL Combine. A lot of players are some players are opting out, some players are deciding not to participate. Right. So where do you think that goes? Like, should players be open to comp- participating in the NFL Draft Combine, or should they more players start to opt out? I think with me, when it comes down to this, is like. I guess there's rules to this, right? If you were injured, if you got injured, like, you know, in the season and you were out for the season and you're healthy now, you got to you gotta perform. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to players like Caleb Williams, you know, or, you know, hell, even Bo Nix and all these other guys, like, yeah. we don't know too much about you guys to kind of give you, like, the props that y'all deserve. Now, Caleb was excellent at USC. But he did struggle against the defensive teams like Utah and some other teams. So, like, and yeah. Bo Nix, you know, he got lit up against Washington. And Phoenix, he got demolished against Michigan. Yeah. The fact, I mean. He didn't get I think Phoenix played pretty well. It's just Michigan. You know yeah, Michigan was elite. But <laughs> I just feel like the combine is a combine. You have to participate. You have, you, so you, I think you, you, you have. Think is that you think they should. You have to participate. You got to stand out to these scouts. You got to. It's the first impression, bro. Like, if you want a team to really take you seriously, like, I, I could give a shit about your reasons, right? Yeah. Unless you're injured, that's cool. But, like, if you're not injured, you need to partake in it. No, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Edwin. You know, obviously, if, you, if you're injured and you can't do the drills, then obviously, you know, don't participate. You know, t- scouts, teams, they're going to know that. You know, so when they see a name, it's like, oh, how did so-and-so do it? You know, oh, he's hurt. You know, he's not able to compete. But, like, say, now say a player who's fully healthy, who can literally participate in these draft combines, yeah. um, and they and they see that he didn't participate, but it's, like, over some, you know, bullshit reason, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, okay, no, that gives us the wrong impression. But, I yeah, I agree. Um, you, have to, you have to participate in the combine. That's what's going to boost your projection going into the draft. Like, like say, for instance, you know, college football ends and you're projected to go third round and yeah. you go into the combine, you do these drills, you give a good impression, you know, it could potentially boost your projection to being a first round pick, you know? That's what the combine is there for, bro. It's just 
to give those guys who obviously didn't get the national spotlight, right? But they got an invitation to show off their skills. Mm-hmm. I feel like players that don't really take advantage of that are just really just wasting just really wasting someone's spot, man. Yeah, like it really it really does. And it sucks to say because there are a lot of talented athletes out there, uh-huh. you know, that can definitely fill the void, but they just don't get that invitation. So the fact that those that don't really partake in none of the drills or some of the drills just it just it, it, it hits me the wrong way. It hits me the wrong way. Now, say someone doesn't participate in a combine for whatever reason, but more importantly, like if it's an injury, of course, but like say you're ready to go come pro day like with whatever school you're coming from then i then i think that's another opportunity you know to get your lick back i'm on the contrary of both of y'all to be honest like i don't think they should be feel obligated to participate in nfl combine it's just opening yourself to more criticism most of them players have the tape you want to know how we play football watch the tape now for other people that don't have as much tape or are neck and neck and want to give themselves a boost, I understand going to the combine. You want to show that you may be faster than the D end that they are ranking ahead of you or the running back receiver ahead of you. So you go to the combine, run your 40 and do that and show that, nah, I'm faster than him. So if, if it's coming to the physical attributes, I'm there with it. But subjecting yourself to more criticism, more reason to knock you down, that shouldn't be the case. If I don't run my 40, it doesn't mean I'm hiding something. Right. If I don't want to throw and I'm a quarterback, it doesn't mean I can't throw. You've seen the tape. I mean, seen the tape. I mean, not to cut you off or anything, but it don't hurt. Like yeah, It doesn't hurt. Look, look, it, it has. Like like what we talked about earlier. McCarthy, what'd you say? He threw ass. He threw like ass. That just hurt his draft stock. He would have been better if he never throwed. But he went there to fucking try to prove his point. Like, I do got a little arm on me. And I respect that. And it, it, I mean, bro, every pass that Phoenix Juniors were throwing, motherfuckers weren't catching his shit, bro. Like, so, like, yeah. sometimes. So, is it, it really his fault, you know? So, like, it just, it goes both ways. Like, it don't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Because yeah. to me, when you go to the NFL draft combine, you're, you're basically letting them know, like, you're setting your impression, like, yo, I'm here to take this seriously. I'm doing this. Yes. You're trying to stand out for a team to draft you. That's what it's all about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't hurt because let me give you some examples. It ain't hurt Tom Brady. It ain't hurt Brock Purdy. Yeah. It ain't hurt, like, you know, George Kittle, those late draft picks. You know? But yeah. those are those players I'm talking about that needed a little more oomph in, my, in that shit to get them drafted, to get them picked, to get them looked at. Like, no draft combine for Tom Brady probably went means undrafted. You know what I'm saying? He missed mm-hmm. it. He got the last pick of that draft, yeah. probably because he showed up yeah. and showed people like, look, I'm I'm committed. I'm putting the work in. Talk to, you know, you get to talk to the scouts and shit personally. So I just, get to, I just get to thinking, man, because like there's a bunch of good athletes, bro, yeah. that don't even get an invitation. Yeah. They have a pro day. You know, that's what the pro day is there also. And that's their best opportunity. But, you know, when you get to the NFL draft combine, there's the media spotlight right there. Like, people want to ask you who you are or yeah. what are you about. It's a money grabber for sure. Definitely. Like, NFL is definitely putting it on, putting it on TV. I mean, they had fans. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. good. money grabber Yeah, for it's sure. fans. People, they, trying to, they want to get some but money. But it also puts you on. It puts you on like, yeah. hey, watch out for this guy or, hey, this guy ran pretty good, you know. But, like, that's what, you know. I agree on that. Like they so got. Like, for example, like I'm not trying to keep it going, but like Very RG3, good. Heisman winner. Right. He came and he participated. Mm-hmm. Didn't he? Didn't need to. Yeah. When he all he did was prove his point even more. I know he was in the same draft as Andrew Luck, right? So he had some competition there. But what he did in the combine, we already seen him do it on the field. But of course, him being a black quarterback, having to go against Andrew Andrew Luck, the other top quarterback in that draft. It's a little bit more pressure, you know what I'm saying? A little bit, a little bit more competition. So Why he I, had to go stand, find a way to stand out. Yeah, yeah I think okay. I think with RG3's case, if I'm not mistaken, you know, battling with Andrew, like it was just more about like, like I I I should go number one before this guy, you know. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, but going back to your answer, you know, before we move on, are you saying like if you don't need to, don't participate, or yeah, if you don't need to. I, I like the door being open for players who need it, but if you don't need to, don't sub, don't subject yourself to being but criticized. I mean, realistically, my bad. I mean, to cut you off. Realistically, there's no. Hey, he said 
He said that twice. He cut me off twice. <laughs> <laughs> There's no player that's like that though this year though. Yeah. Every in my opinion, everyone should stand out because look, my biggest criticism with Caleb Williams is I don't think he takes shit seriously. The fact that he's more worried about you know where he's gonna get where he's gonna land rather well, than it's Caleb Williams. They've been they've been. You know what I'm the saying? The Bears do it's not it. need Caleb Williams. Y'all do not need to draft yeah, they, Caleb Williams. If y'all do need him. to Justin Fields, yeah, they don't need him. Y'all have Justin so Fields. Y'all good. Money, so y'all got to think of the money, the financial aspect. If you keep Justin Fields, you have to give him a big deal right now it, or like in the next year. And based off of the numbers he put up, even though they're not winning, the stats that he put up, he's a top tier. He top tier. He like a big dollar quarterback. But the thing is, Justin Fields is the better QB. That is true, but like if you get Caleb, if you if you get Caleb Williams, uh, he's reacting off of that. He doesn't. Oh think yeah. That. But K, if you get Caleb Williams, then you get him underneath the the rookie deal. Right, you get him for like three, four. I get the business seasons. aspect, but do the Bears really want to look? Do the Bears really want to continue game drafting top five? Because that's what you're gonna get. But like they they've already they've even having this discussion that we having right now. They've already kind of hurt the. Hurt their relationship with Justin Fields. If yeah. I'm Justin Fields, man, fuck y'all. Because y'all, y'all acting like y'all ain't got no faith with oh, me. Oh, God, yeah. I feel so, it. I feel it. Justin Fields, go to a better situation, get paid the money he deserves. Kalen Williams, get his opportunity. Either he going to shine or not. It's going to be a tough situation to shine regardless. It's just, it's it's tough because the Bears don't have a line. So, you, and if the scouts are The saying, Bears don't have too shit. much talent at they all. Have and shit. then they have a coaching struggle. They got to figure out the coaching situation yeah. and stuff like that. So it's kind of so like... It's, it's not even the best situation to even walk man, into. Well, just, just pick your poison. You want to keep Justin, but at least he can scramble and get you yards, get you winning games. People comparing Caleb. We going down this path. So let's talk about the best quarterback prospects right now. Caleb Williams. People are describing him as being... Goated. Patrick Mahomes esque, yeah, yeah. Aaron Rodgers esque, the improv, the improv, the being able to scramble, get out the pocket, throw dimes right, still, right. and then he got the personality to go with it. He's just like money. It's like money. It's like making it rain, like Birdman. The only, <laughs> the only thing I would say about Caleb is as talented he is, because we seen what he did to text when he was in OU, bro. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> fuck that game. But um, we we know how talented he is, but the Bears don't need to be drafting him number one. No, yeah. Go if ahead, they, if they for all, if they're for all on committing on Justin Fields, regardless of what their relationship is, then I don't think Caleb goes number one. I think it's Marvin Harrison Jr. Because you gotta give you gotta give weapons for Justin Fields. Now, if from what I'm hearing is true, Atlanta is interested in getting Fields. And, you know, they give him an offer that Chicago can't say no to. And they're like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Take him. Then I think Caleb goes number one. Yeah. And I think. No, go ahead. I, don't, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're good. My fault. But I think Caleb's going one regardless. Because, like, if we play in Madden, we in franchise mode. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? He, Justin Fields trying to tie up some money. Like I just said, let him go trade him. You get some picks. Get a player or two out of it. Boom! I pick number one. Then now we we would just we just had talked about how the line is sorry, but now I got that cap room. I'm available to go sign some big, you know, husky mug. You know what I'm saying? To go block for Caleb. Caleb should have a better showing than Justin Fields, depending on if they're able to put the coaching <laughs> around him and the pieces around him. Then potentially he can have a better opportunity than Justin Fields. Justin Fields then had the shit end of the stick if we yeah. really thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, bro. It's yeah, we it's should draft we should have drafted Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know, as much as I I like Trey Hold on. Yeah, I did Trey Lance dirty, bro. Come on. Like as much as I like Trey Lance. <laughs> the 49ers blew it. Yeah, we should have drafted Justin, and Justin Fields. I don't know. He tried to he trying to plug y'all in. Hey, fuck y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, but back to the, the back to, dirty, bro. Back to the QB topic, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Caleb is the number one overall quarterback, facts. But Bo Nix is in the mix. Penix Junior's in the mix. I, my Daniels. favorite is Penix Junior. Yeah, Penix Junior is. I'm not gonna lie. I think he is. I think he will. I, I I honestly think he's the safer pick than Caleb Williams. Yeah. Because Caleb Williams, you just you see the flashing lights, like what he can be. 
But I feel like Penix just showed you what he already is. Yeah. He given you, he got the athleticism, he got the arm, the accuracy, and the strength. Yeah. The brain, the mentality is there, man. Like, I feel like I trust him more yeah. than Caleb. Because, you know, you got Caleb. He bounced around. Question of He's playing the big games, too. Like, Penix is playing the big games. He has, yeah. Games. He's faced oh, the better opponents. Phoenix? Yeah. yeah, he's faced the better opponents, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, in my opinion, I think Penix is the better quarterback. Yeah. And he should have won the Heisman. I feel like um, with left-handed quarterbacks, it, it you can learn that system in an offseason. How he throws. Mm-hmm. When uh, when Steve Young became you know the number one quarterback for the Niners, Jay Rice literally spent like fucking four months with Steve Young after they lost, and just practicing practice on that left handed catch. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how he he delivered it. But. but as far as Caleb, there's there's just no way he he slips past the third pick, which is New England. New England's gonna need a quarterback, and it kind of sounds like Washington is. More committed to Jaden Daniels, so yeah. Right. If if he slept number on one, Daniels too, yeah. And Jayden if uh, if Chicago ends up drafting Marvin I'm Harrison Jr., yeah. Um, are you good? Me late. <laughs> no, that's good. And if they if they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and commit to Justin Fields, then Caleb's going to New England. It's, it's an interesting draft this year because this draft is basically an O lineman, you know, yeah. D lineman receivers. Is really not quarterback focused, but there are some hidden gems to mm-hmm. not sleep on. Like, but you know, we all know who's gonna go first. It's Caleb and then Jaden. Now that Jayden they're Daniels. and the last two are probably gonna be between Bo Nix and Phoenix. So, but we'll see. Well, since we already we still in the off season, so let's let's talk about one more off season topic real quick. Free agency, NFL free agency. Mm-hmm. Already big things has been popping off. Big sure. names have been. F- Put on the tags. Right. Some names have not been on the tag. Right. So where what y'all what are y'all boldest free agency predictions right now? Uh I'm gonna start off with the Cowboys. Um I don't think they bring back Tony Pollard. I don't and Tyron Smith, I don't think he's coming back either. But I, if anybody if I'm bringing back anybody for the Cowboys, I think it will be Stephon Gilmore, and more specifically, not because I think he's still got or whatever. I think he'd be a good uh, third corner, but mm-hmm. I think it's more of his veteran presence that yeah. we need for our defense and the defensive backfield. But uh, one long shot, I said this last time I was here, um, I really hope they go after um, Patrick Queen, uh, the linebacker from Baltimore, yeah. because Van Der Esch, it, it's not looking too good for him. I think he's going to retire mm-hmm. uh, sometime this offseason. And we get someone like Patrick Queen that can um, help out with our linebacker core. And with uh, DeMar Vion Overson coming back from uh, injury, mm-hmm. uh, and then I think it's going to be straight. But my focus for um, – if I was a Cowboys, my focus for this free agency will be um, bringing back the, the linebacker core. You know, you were shitting on my nanners that we were going to have to rebuild the squad <laughs> or whatever. But in case I didn't know, the NFL salary cap increased by a whopping $30 million. Okay, so, so you're going to bring everybody and, back? And, um, they we're, can't. He's and, still, he's, they still can't. No, we're still good. We're like, we're like, we're under like a million. We're good. But I feel, I still feel like we are going to make a big change. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to start with our defensive line. Mm-hmm. I feel like either Hargrave or Hargrove or, um, um, Armstead is going to get traded. They're big money men. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing with the issue with I think it's Armstead, but the thing with Armstead is he's had too many injuries, bro, to be getting paid what he's getting paid. So that's it. But on top of that, I feel like the biggest need that the Niners need to do is just improve the offensive line, yeah. offensive line, and maybe some cornerbacks. You know, I'm not saying go all in on you know free agency, but like this is a good draft, man, to draft some good interior linemen and some cornerbacks mm-hmm. for sure. Hell, even a safety, but. That's the thing I'm looking forward to the most is who is going to go. But I really feel like it's going to be Armstead. Mm-hmm. I've said Armstead on here before. Yeah. We get Ar- we get rid of Armstead, bro. We good. Hell, we can probably even resign Chase Young for the minimum. What do you think, man? What do you, what do you think? What you think the Cowboys First are going to do? I don't give a fuck what the Forty Nine ers <laughs> do. I hope y'all stay shitty. <laughs> I hope y'all get shittier. You know what I'm saying? And don't never make it to another Super Bowl again. You know what I'm saying? Hell for all I care. Now, <laughs> the go-to 
what I think. I hope the Cowboys aggressively push for Saquon Barkley. Aggressively. Yes. They didn't get the tag. On they didn't put the Giants didn't put the tag on Saquon, so he he available. A lot of people, especially since we live in Austin, we gotta hear a lot of shit from people from Houston. They they want him to go there. It's been rumored that they one of the targets. But listen here, Saquon, look, boo. Listen, you played for the Giants. They didn't trust in you. They didn't they believe didn't. in you. No. Come to the Big D. You know what I'm saying? Beat the shit out of the, them twice. The big market in Texas. You play them two times a year. Show them your worth. You know what I'm saying? We not fucking with Pollard no more. I love you, Pollard, but we not fucking with you. Bring Barkley over here. Give him his time to shine. Time to grind. The time is mine. Nah, no, I just <laughs> let. I just let. And we gonna, and we gonna get. We gonna we gonna get to the bowl, man. We need you, man. Just hear me out, man. Damn. So where's just all his energy for uh, Derrick Henry now? He 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 a little older. That's Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. All respect to the man. He's just a little older. I need a back with a little bit more time. You know what nah, I'm saying? I still want to say no to Derrick Henry if I'm being Definitely. honest. But what if the predicament is Pollard stays for like a cheaper deal and you sign Henry for the minimum? Oh yeah. Pollard. Fuck it, but, let's do it. but I don't see that happening because I feel like Pollard is gonna wanna test. Yeah. He's gonna, he gonna wanna test free agency. He wanna yeah. see what other people think about him. Right. And I don't yeah. unfortunately, like especially after this last season, I don't think people think highly of him. Because of the injury, coming back from the injury, he didn't bounce back like he like he didn't show as explosion that he had the seasons before. So I feel like people are like, eh, you're not, we're not going to give you yeah. top dollar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he is open to come back though. Yeah, hopefully, because like we if if we can set up a little dynamic duo with like Saquon, Saquon, please come, and then we can get like pause, Pollard. <laughs> Get shake one and pair him with like somebody like Jonathan Brooks Pollard or in the draft. No, nah, I ain't trying to draft no back. I ain't gonna lie to you. No, why not Jonathan <laughs> Brooks? Hey, now we do sleep on running backs. There is a good running back class. That guy from Michigan, bro, he's not projected to be a first rounder, second rounder, or third if, rounder. If somebody that's top tier is available, go ahead and pick them. But we, it's not like you know what I'm saying we don't got too many options in the draft. We drafting pretty low. No, right. but, but what I'm saying is, like, Jonathan Brooks, he, you know, he, if he was healthy, yeah, he's going first round. Yeah, definitely. But because of his injury, we can, like, low-key steal him in the third, maybe. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. why not Why not pair Jonathan Brooks with... How is y'all salary cap looking like, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I mean... Y'all good? Or I mean, we're, we're good, players? but it's like we got to think about guys like C.D. Lamb and Michael Parsons, you know, uh-huh. obviously... You know, but Jerry Jones getting, said, getting them paid, right? Yeah, like yeah. J- Jerry Jones said, you know, like he wants to go all in, which, you know, is cool and all, but at what cost? You know, right. is are we going to be able to still sign Michael Parsons, CD Lamb, or even extend Dak? You know, so if I'm like one of the high key players in the free agency market, if I'm looking at the Cowboys situation, it's like it's a win now team, right? Yeah, but at least it's supposed to be. But yeah. the salary cap is going to dictate, like, am I going to take the minimum? For a ring. this is where you this is where you test Dak Prescott and his loyalty because right. there's, there's been other quarterbacks that took less or adjusted their deals to make a team more team friendly. Right, Tom Brady. Now this is where I'm kind of questionable about, about Dak because he a brother and we gotta get our money. You feel me? But he's sorry. He should he should definitely work if he if he representing a star like he say he is and he about winning a Super Bowl in Dallas like he say he is then restructure your deal to be. More team friendly, mm-hmm. get some more, get some more pieces, pieces in, so you can actually make this dream that you saying that you standing on making happen for Dallas happen, because it'd be big time, and I would love my team, the Dallas Cowboys, to win a Super Bowl with a black quarterback, bro. So you know what I'm saying? That that just be amazing. I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all or just win in general. Because Jerry Jones low key racist. We all seen we, we all seen the little picture that leaked like what was that a year ago when he was like at the front door and the, the well he was at the front but like he was in the crowd yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying but like bitch ass boy but um I mean y'all good <laughs> hey, though man, times are different you y'all know? good man, though I let you know but yeah, y'all good though because even if Dak doesn't work Trey yeah, Lance is right there yeah and I think that's that's what 
Jerry Jones doesn't want to admit it, but I think with that Trey Lance shit. <laughs> no, nah. he's good, bro. He's nah, 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 but, like, nah, but, but, but let's be honest. Like Jerry Jones doesn't want to admit it because he doesn't want to hurt the extension talks with Dak. Right. But I, we all know if Dak for whatever reason doesn't want to sign with Dallas or he feels like he's not being respected enough with the with the money talks, then our safe our safe option would definitely be Trey Lance. What's up, guys? Here at the City Boy Podcast, we're all about helping and supporting small business, which leads me to today's sponsor. You think you need a sparkle at your home or office? Go ahead and hit up our friends at R&D Cleaning Services. These guys are a pro. For the last 16 years, this family-owned business has been keeping Texas homes, commercial buildings, residential buildings, all kinds of buildings clean and spotless. They're basically known for their strip floor and waxing. So go ahead and give them a call right now. They're giving free estimates. And on top of that, you will get a 10% off by signing up with them. And also, if you refer to them, a friend or a family member, not only does that person get a 10% off coupon, but also for referring them, you will get a free month of service. So go ahead and reach out to them at 737 243 20 50 or 737 256 1893 R&D cleaning services they got the shine that you need that was our sponsor R&D cleaning service if you need any cleaning like the advertisement said tap in with them please and thank you for everything y'all doing uh we are some wrestling fans Sir, so let's get into some wrestling content. Wrestling, you know wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. It's the road to WrestleMania. It's less than forty days. I don't know if it's less than a month yet, but I know it's less than forty days. I saw. 40 I think it's like year. thirty something days now, but yeah, close enough. So, the road to WrestleMania. We hearing a lot of bloodline Cody talk. We know that's going down now. How do y'all think? What do y'all think? about how the storyline is playing out with the bloodline and Cody Rhodes. I I personally think whatever happens night one is going to dictate what happens in night two. So it's just something to keep an eye on. And I've been hearing a lot of, you know, The Rock turning on Roman or possibly Seth turning on Cody. Mm -hmm. I personally think both can legitimately happen, yeah. you know. But, you know, but tag team... um, you know, the winner gets to choose their own stipulation. Um, I think right now the company is seeing that this storyline is what's booming for them right now. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's the storyline, uh, you know, which is I think the second one is probably uh, Bailey and um, the whole damage control thing. But right now, the bloodline story, whether you like it or not, you know, that's that's the best storyline right now. And that's what they're writing off of, you know, for them. As the main event for the for WrestleMania. Yep. It's stupid. It's stupid, bro. <laughs> point point blank. Why is Seth and Cody teaming up to face Roman and and Rock? That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you got. I mean, uh, you're yeah. cutting me off. I'm talking. You, you yeah. just cut this man off. Hey, be, <laughs> like polite, be polite. Be polite. <laughs> be polite. But, but like, you got to think about it though. Like you know, set, uh, CM Punk's hurt. You know, Brock is it going to participate with the whole? Vince allegations, so like they they need to stack the card up a little bit. Now the tag team, yeah, like this tag team should have happened like at elimination chamber, but because of what's going on you know with the they roster, well, like, they brought Rock back. Should have just left it alone. Like it should have been, it should have been. Rock and Roman should have been last year's mania. Mm-hmm. That should have yeah, been it. I agree. That should have been it. No, bro. It should have been it. Rhodes should have fucking won. But they want this Samoan nigga to break records for some reason. The whole- like, bro, like, he good. Like, me and Tino was rooting for Roman when the crowd was bo- booing. Yes. I, when, they I, all, when they turned it back against him. Yeah, bro. bro, like, I want... Roman is legit. He is a good champion. But he... You are hurting the roster in general because you putting the title on only him. Yeah. He don't show up enough. Mm-hmm. That hurts the... That hurts the... The product. Yeah. Your champion is barely there. And when he is there, he barely competes. Yeah. What did you get out of John Cena and Randy Orton Edge? Them niggas was there every fucking day. Triple H, even OG Rock, Stone Cold. Them niggas was wrestling every day. So 
when Brock Lesnar changed the whole how the shit work and he came, won the title, and showed up for Roman to repeat that after working so hard to even get to that, I I just lost a little respect for the nigga because you was my nigga. But why are you selling out for this yeah. shit that's is good for you? Like I can't hate. You got a schedule that works for you. You around all the benefits of family, all this. I understand, but you not putting on for WWE like you claim you is because you is not there. Niggas like Seth Rollins, I'm sorry if this rant going too long. Niggas like Seth Rollins, them should be universal champions. They, Kevin Owens, they should be the champions. Yeah, they every, they there every day. Yeah. They there every day. Yeah, but that's the thing. Fuck Roman. But that's uh-huh. the but that's the thing though. Okay, so you make a you make another world champion. Seth is is the world heavyweight title. He's yeah. he's defending it this he's defending the title as often as like you're saying and now people are getting bored out of it. So so I don't I don't understand like why we're sh- we're shitting on Roman because he doesn't defend it a lot, but we give it to Seth, who's the work f- workhorse champion. I mean, to be honest, I've been bored of Roman's reign ever since. Yes, since last yes. year, bro. It's because the storylines, like this, like it's not it's not that them the, they were defending it too much. It's because back in the gap, the storylines lasted about three pay per views, and yeah, now I they can't that. build out a story that lasts that long without it getting stale. That's their fault. That's the writer's fault. That's the creator's fault. Yeah. But Randy Orton I mean, and John Cena went for two, three, damn near half a year. Like John Cena Edge go for two, three months. That, the title reign, that's, after four of those rivalries, he completed a calendar year with good storylines. But that's what, that's the creative fault that that's not possible. Because yeah. there's wrestlers, and, and, and not, I'm not, matter of fact, I, I cut the creators some slack. It's also the wrestlers, bro. Because they got to be able to build their characters, carry the promos, and engage. Yeah, do the, part. Yeah, do the and, part. yeah, and make it. I mean, what about, what about, you know, Cody's story and then the whole bloodline? That's been going on for a while now. But the thing is, the thing, the thing that pissed me off about the whole shenanigans, mm-hmm. really, I started getting bored when Sami Zayn lost to Roman. That I mean, was, I told you that, that wasn't was, going to happen. That was, that was going to be, that was complete bullshit because we know what was going to happen after yeah, that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But... I actually I do blame the writers fault because there was nothing going on besides you know uh, Judgment Day that was exciting, bro. Like That's what I'm saying. Bloodline and Judgment Day were probably the hottest thing that were happening in WWE the, the past year or so. But that's boring because there's nothing else. Like I respect Gunther. Gunther is, you know, Gunther's real. But even he don't even have like good story. Exactly. What's that story that you undefeated? You the Intercontinental Champion. I don't know. Look, like, in the Royal Rumble, I didn't knew half of the. I did not know half of the motherfuckers that came in. That's what I'm saying. Because you don't watch. That's just what I'm saying. Like, I knew, like, but pretty much everybody. Be, besides the main guys, what's going to be enticing for me to watch it again? Who's enticing enough? Uh, okay, but my thing is, like, okay, you know, regardless of how y'all feel about the bloodline thing, yeah. like, but it, that's what's working for WWE right now because this everybody's invested in the story. And the same with Cody. Everybody wants Who Cody. Though? Who is, though? Like, name, 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 like name, name I agree audience. with that, but he, no, yeah, I, agree with, I agree with him because... Everybody's bought into that, but I think it's because that's all you've given them. No, I mean, that's I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's more like you try to create another story going on, but everybody's more focused on the on the bloodline. That's just me, because like when I when I look at, um, like on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, this whole thing got stale. When um, I would say the whole thing with the Usos. You know, separating from the bloodline, and then Jay went out and do his own thing, and then Jimmy, for some reason, came back. You know, that part I'll admit got stale. But then now that you bring in the Rock, and now the storyline has re like reinvested in itself. So now everybody is more then, more then into I, it I now. I kind of echo Edwin. Who is invested in the bloodline? I truly do not believe nobody gives a fuck about the bloodline like that. We give a fuck I mean, about the Rock can, being back. I'm we are excited. The like Rock it has is names. back. It has names like Star Power. Yeah, it has the that. Rock and that's Roman. It. That's what we like. Right. We like attaching the bloodline to it. That's just add. That's not. Nah, it's we don't give a fuck about the bloodline. We give a fuck that we see the Rock and Roman. Yes. We don't give a fuck about the bloodline. Yeah, but that, but the bloodline is what attaches to them. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I like, like all, all I'm saying is the bloodline has been established for the past year along with Judgment Day, right? As I think the, longer. 
as okay as the like you know the best things that are happening have been happening in WWE for the last couple of years. But it just reaches a point where you're like, if Roman keeps winning titles, you know what I'm saying? Like again, it's guys who should be winning it, like you said, that are there, like Cody, like mm-hmm. Sami Zayn, and so forth and so on, right? It just gets dull, man. It, just, it, it does, really, bro. it really gets dull. It does. I mean, I don't know, cause, cause look, I want to see the tire, the tire, the title being shared. Like Roman has had enough reigns. Like as I do champion. agree. Like the prestige of the title is hella high because he's held it for so long. But that's the only thing to me that makes it. Prestige. I mean, I mean, we can say what you want, but we thought Roman beating Cody last year was going to hurt Cody, and now, not only people want to see him win the title and, and beat Roman even more, but I think it's his star power is bigger than last year. You, you, you know, you're right on that. It is. Yeah. Bigger. So yeah, I don't understand it is, this. It is hurting him in the fact that well, CM Punk's injury didn't help either, right? But the Rock being in the match. Like I don't think Rock should be in. No, I agree. Many, like so many at all. Like no, yeah, I agree. But but like I said, but I think they have to do this because of of like like you said, CM Punk, him getting hurt, and then the whole situation with Brock. So now they're in position where like okay, if if we just if we just like take take the leave the Rock out and then leave our card the way it is, like I, that's I, not what's gonna draw they, people. They, they kind of put them in there. They put themselves in this situation because they doing they're doing the two night thing. So you're right. They don't have yeah. another match that they don't have nothing else yeah. that so could. So you have. They have to stack the cards. Niggas will these not people. watch the other night. Niggas I, literally will not watch the other night. I just, I just want that <laughs> night. Look, all I care about is Cody winning the title. <laughs> if, if Rock beats, bro, like let's say Treasury happens and Roman betrays Rock. Okay, let, let's really back in. Let me, let me ask the question. Let me, let right. me ask you the question. All right. So, what is your prediction of night one, the tag team match, and then night two, the solo match? I feel like I'm lo- I lose regardless. <laughs> <laughs> I lose regardless. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But I'm going to go with Cody Roman. Uh, Cody and uh, Seth. Them winning night one? Yeah. And then yeah. what happens night two? Cody faces Roman. And then but, he's going to win that and one. And Cody beats Roman. I say this is why I... This is why I again I, I disagree have, right I, here. I don't, I don't be watching that be like that. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You know, it's cool. I like but good. I think what's gonna happen. I think The Rock is gonna turn on Roman night one, and then Cody and said they're gonna see this as their opportunity to win the match. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's fair to say at that point, Cody pins Roman, and then Cody for night two think he thinks it's gonna be in the clear. You know. You know, no bloodline, no, no, nobody ringside. It's just me and you, Roman. And I think there's going to be a big swerve happen. What? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I think there's going to be a big swerve. And I think Roman's going to retain, bro. So you want what happened last year to happen again? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Roman's going to retain, my dog. This is right, but let me say this, though. Like, this, this is why I think like that. Because I like Cody, you know, I want to see him finish the story. You know, it, it, this isn't about me hating Cody, you know. I just want to make that clear. I like Cody. You know, hell, I got a picture with him on my phone. Russell Circus probably doesn't even remember. But yeah. but my but my issue that I cannot get behind is, you know, okay, don't get me wrong. What they did to Cody with the whole Rock and Roman thing, thinking that was going to happen at WrestleMania, that's dumb. There, there, there's no denying that. Mm-hmm. But it's the... It's the, you know, threatening to bomb WrestleMania and sending death threats to The Rock's daughter that I I cannot get behind on. You know, that Nobody event, supports that, by the way. Nobody, yeah. And that's what that's what annoyed me and kind of like ruined me wanting to see Cody beat Roman this year's WrestleMania. You know, I want to see Cody finish the story, but the way the fans like handle this, um, the Cody Crybabies, I should say. Yeah. That that kind of ruined for me. So like, if that's anything, a, that's a certain group of fans. No, oh, yeah, talk to it's not. Much. It's not all. It's not all of them. Don't get me wrong. Like that's why the rocks. <laughs> but since you calling people Cody Crabbers, I, I get tired of hearing that phrase. So you bloodline, bloodline you bitches, you bloodline bitches, bloodline that keep United, rocking man. with Roman Reigns and wanting him to hold the title until we pass away. 
Go hey. fall underneath hey, the rock. Hey, I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? Break, hey, Roman, if you're look, watching my, this, my, my break, break, break Bruno's record, bro. Look, my I'm here for like, it. When is, Rome, when is Cody? Look. Let's not give him no more attention. God, let's go ahead and wrap it. Look, my take is uh, just real quick. I think Rock and Roman do win the tag match. Okay. And then this time when Cody gets the match and everybody's involved in, involved in interfering, he still pulls it out. He gets a little help or something, and he pulls it out. That would make it even more glorious to me, put even more, you know, Gloria. make him even a, a stronger figure, get even more of a pop when he wins the title. If, if, okay, so if that happens, do you have anybody, like, surprising coming out, like, to help Cody? Uh, not off the top right now. Like, I, I'll tell you this, though, because when, when I heard about this potential – AEW WWE deal that there was working with in, in regards with uh, Sting um, his final match because supposedly AEW wants to use some of uh, Sting's footage from WCW mm-hmm. and the only way that they could, that can work is if they talk to WWE first and the rumor was that in exchange they'll let um, Dustin Rhodes go dust um, That'd be dope to show up show up for night two you know help Cody that would be dope but I heard <laughs> they would yeah. But now that I heard um, AEW never asked WWE for the footage, so, like, the deal never went through, I think someone like Stone Cold comes in and helps Cody. It's a long shot, but, you know, why not? If I, if I want to throw my two cents there, you mentioned Glorious. I'll say Bobby Roode. <laughs> so Bobby Roode. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for mentioning AEW and Sting's match, because that can transition us straight to that. AEW was Real last... Awesome. Real wrestling. <laughs> no, it's not. But <laughs> this last weekend, what, Revolution? Revolution. The pay-per-view, the pay-per-view <laughs> was headlined by Sting's last match. Yes, sir. So I give a round of applause for Sting on a great career. Shout out to Sting. Shout out to Sting. All right, I want y'all to give me two things. From AEW Revolution, what was the best match of the night? And how was Sting's match? So the best match of the night was between Will Ospreay and uh, Kenosuke Takeshka. Man, that shit was amazing, bro. Like everyone's being introduced to Will Ospreay right now. Man, that's what he does on, the, on. That's what he did in Japan all the time, bro. Just delivered banger after banger. Yeah. yeah. Now to finish up your question, um, man, it was a crazy ass match, bro. Shout out to Darby Allen. You were you were crazy. <laughs> you were crazy <laughs> motherfucker, crazy, bro. bro. You were crazy <laughs> motherfucker, bro. And uh, but I'm glad Darby got to learn from Sting. He took him under his wing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, the thing I remember most about Sting is just the fact that he's just for his age, bro. The fact that he was taking those table spots, he got thrown into the glass, bro. Oh man, just a real soldier, a real wrestler, and the icon. Yeah, the icon. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I was getting ready to say the triple threat match. Was gonna be the match of the night, mm-hmm. you know. It was obviously good. it, it was, was good. good. Don't get me wrong, but like good. I felt like Swerve winning that, like it would have got like a big reaction, yeah. and I was gonna I was gonna get ready to say, okay, that's the match of the night. But nah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Joe, you know. So Joe retaining was like, nah, nah, this ain't the match of the night. I was I would have to agree with Will Ospreay's match, and but Sting and Darby Allen against the Bucks, um, that was that was a good. That was a good match. If anything, it turned out better than I thought it would. Mm-hmm. You know, so like seeing Sting go out like that, you know, on a much better send off, you know, I'm really happy for him. Yeah. For me, the best match of the night surprisingly was the triple threat match to me. Uh it was solid. Yeah. It was. I y'all hear me criticize Swerve, but that kind that match kind of pulled me. This new character, not the cringy character with this the shysty mask, mask and all that, man. <laughs> I can get behind this character. It's right. more realistic. It seemed not too try hard, not too trying to too be much, relatable yeah. to the young and all that. Like yeah. that's a that's a believable character. If right. that's the character that he goes on goes with moving forward, I do want him to eventually win the title. Right. And I I think what made me favor that match so much was Samoa Joe winning it because I didn't want him to win, mm-hmm. but them doing that. Got me even more invested because I wanted him to lose so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Winning that whole kind of got me riled up. So I was like, fuck. 
And then the go to Sting, Sting's match. Sting, Darby, like we. <laughs> hey, Darby's crazy, Darby's bro. Is it was a lot of dumb spots in that whole pay per view. Like the Osprey match, the the suplex on the the turnbuckle. Yeah. That was is dumb, bro. And the fucking, Somebody should have yeah. been paralyzed off of that. <laughs> and the and fact that he wasn't. That's what I'm like, saying. That's like, crazy. That's bro. crazy. And then the back door that with in the main event, Darby Allen jumping off. I don't know how high. Crashing, like we we know wrestling's fake. He knew he was finna smack dead on that glass. Back <laughs> immediately started bleeding, bro. God, oh what's God. that? What's that dude's name? That fuck this shit. <laughs> like it was. It was supposed to be all about Sting, the icon Sting. So many wrestlers emulated him and idolized him, but that. Moment right there, him smashing into that glass and his back bleeding from that moment to the end of the match is etched in my mind. Bro, it was. I mean, Sting approved of it, bro. So everything that happened that match, Sting wanted yeah. it to happen. So, shit. But Darby does that crazy shit, bro. And, yeah. You know. Supposedly, fans. Some of the fans like that were like right there nearby where Darby um, did that him. did that uh, stunt. Uh, like they got like cuts from it from the glass hitting them. From what I've heard, you know. Shit. Here's a... (laughs) (laughs) Just imagine. (laughs) 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 It was a solid pay-per-view, bro. It was, in my opinion, I think it was one of the best AEW pay-per-views. I mean, it was was a good pay-per-view overall, but let's be be real. Eddie Kingston and Daniel Bryan match, I, I, I couldn't get behind that one. You know, I, th- I think y'all. I think Daniel Bryan carried Daniel Kingston. If, I, if I'm if I'm being y'all real, y'all try him. this Eddie, Eddie Kingston <laughs> shit, bro. Like, I respect the man. Everything he's done for wrestling, I I like I I respect him, bro. He an OG OG. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But get this nigga off, out the ring, bro. Look, man, give him some props. Besides MJF, he's the only other guy that can cut a promo like that, bro. And what? Make for, for, a, for a, make you feel, like, it'll make you feel. Fuck his promos, bro. <laughs> like, I don't be nah. feeling his promos don't like that. So when you the said that, King. I'm like, bro, what are you talking don't about? Don't be disrespecting like, the Mad King, bro. Come on. His promos against, like, uh, when he was plexing with the Blackpool Combat Club, long ass, dumb ass name, by the way. But when he was plexing with them, those promos, they came off good because, like, they were real slugs thrown in between them. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing, though. And they've been wrestling with each other for like a year span at that point. So the shit that they saying to each other, they got some, some back in behind. Eddie's been doing that, though. That's my point. He's been doing Fuck that. Fuck Eddie Kingston, bro. But, you know, the pay-per-view was good. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to uh, what... The next one's Dynasty, I think. Yeah, then what the next... What the future holds for AEW, because Okada debuted it tonight on he Dynamite. Did. Shout out to Okada, my man... The Japan GOAT. Should have signed WWE, right but now, right. It's definitely like a, a void and like some opportunity there. Definitely. Man. Right. Yeah. And uh, also, just to sum it all up, I'm going to sum it all up. Sting, <laughs> Sting is better than The Undertaker. No. Whoa! Just letting y'all know. What the fuck? Whoa! I'm not. I'm not. Hey, no, whoa, Edwin. 2008 Undertaker? Oh, no. Yeah. Flag on the play. Traveling, offsides, clipping. Y'all, you ever seen a picture? No homo. Or that oh. man with his shirt off during that time? Okay. He but, was yeah. an absolutely, <laughs> absolute monster. He Dang. actually looked scary. And don't you He think wasn't so? just the dead man. His physique was... He actually looked like he was about that shit, bro, at that yeah. time. When he was in his prom, prom, bro. When he could jump over the rope, you know what I'm saying? Like this man. The la- uh, what was it? Uh, that damn, man. I forgot what it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Down. That Look, man is, what was that called? Damn. He's not my goat, but he is for sure ahead of Sting. No, bro. no, you're tripping, bro. Nah, I'm gonna have to take Undertaker Sting, before Sting is Sting. There's a reason why Sting's the icon, bro. No, 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 no. There's, there's a reason no. why Sting's the icon. Bullshit. No, it's Sorry. not bullshit. It's not bullshit. This is absolutely... Sting is better than The Undertaker, bro. No way. Bro. Yes, Hell. Bro. What, what bro, the fact... him better? What skill does he have over Undertaker? He held the world title in the NWA, OG, NWA, and in WCW. So? But, but, but that's the thing, though. Like, I feel like you take the titles away from Undertaker, 
I I st- I still think that doesn't take away from his legacy, bro. Like that's how that's how truly was great a big he was. Name on the biggest wrestling platform for years. Yes, and Sting was Sting the, was not. And Sting was the biggest name of all time. No, yes, bro. the best. Like if we yeah, talking no. about goats, if we talking about goats of yeah. wrestling, let's be honest. Who wrestled with Ric Flair? Who wrestled with Ricky the Steamboat? Well, well, what Ricky technically speaking, Steamboat. Taker did wrestle. Who wrestled with, with Flair? the World Warriors, bro? <laughs> So I'm saying the so, goat to me is Shawn Michaels. If we talking about goats of wrestling, I'm not. No, Shawn I'm not, Michaels is I'm the best talking, wrestler I'm ever. Right. Right. I'm just saying Sting is better than the Undertaker. What? What? Okay, so let me ask you this: What storyline, like that, you know, Sting was a part of that was that was like so great compared to Undertaker's storyline? The one against Hollywood Hogan. The fact that he took a year. No. The fact that he took a year, bro, while he watched the destruction of the NWO and WCW. And then he won that title against him in Starcade in '97. Come on, bro. bro Come on, Undertaker's man. Undertaker's been in so many great storylines, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That, I, I don't that, think. I don't think. Streak. Yes. WrestleMania streak. Like, bro. Like, the, uh, his second match uh, against Shawn Michaels with uh, the streak versus the career match. Like, man, that had me on. Like, oh, what the fuck? What's gonna happen here? You know, like. Because I mean, you didn't know what was going to happen. Not a factions no? we own that, bro. What is the best? Because Undertaker is... Fuck what he talking about. Undertaker nah, is better than nah, Sting. Nah, but anyway, 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 anyway. I agree with Jameer. Anyway, Undertaker... Not. What not. is Undertaker's best streak match? What is the best WrestleMania match? I can tell you my person of why y'all think. You know what I'm saying? Undertaker versus CM Punk. That hoe was a good ass match and slept on, but uh, yeah, it was did. it was probably the match of that WrestleMania. Bro. I don't I don't remember. I say the one with Batista in WrestleMania twenty three. Okay, okay. that's when that's the year he won the Rumble. Okay, okay. Uh, we so when you say his best streak match, like are we talking about like the wrestling match overall, or yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, then in that case, then uh, him. Against Shawn Michaels, the first match. Yeah. I think the first match, wrestling wise, was better than the second one. But I just think the mm-hmm. second match had a better storyline story. yeah. than but the first one. The reason why I say Sting or Retakers, because I grew up watching Sting back in, Which is cool, back you know? in El Paso, mm-hmm. you know, Juarez. We had WCW content all the time. So I was watching Sting all the damn time against Vampiro, Billy Kidman, and all those guys. So Sting has a. A place in my heart, bro. I can just yeah, imagine. Little sting I, love tattoo. I guess that's Sting. a little Sting tattoo. The logo, right here. <laughs> well, I love Sting, but yes, Sting is better than the Undertaker. All right, let's move on to some more fighting. A UFC. We're all UFC fans here, MMA fans here. Big Showtime event, UFC 299 this weekend. Sean, you know what I'm saying? Man, the GOAT. O'Malley Sugar. What y'all think is going to happen? Uh, I think Sean O'Malley is gonna is gonna win his match. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say I, I'm predicting because this is a different Sean O'Malley than than uh, the first the first fight he had with uh, Vera. Yeah. And I think I think O'Malley is gonna make a statement. Get I think he's gonna knock Vera out third round maybe. Yeah. And he's gonna I want to say solidify. As like a goat or anything like that, but that's gonna be a statement where like I'm the best, I'm the best fighter in the UFC right now. Yeah, I think O'Malley is gonna knock him out second round, and I think he's already the goat. But you know, nah, this is nah, it's too think, early. Nah, 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 that's it's, it was way too early. He ain't mm-hmm. like he's solid, and he he's showing the glimpses of being a a great, but he still got to pad that palette. Like he he ain't done enough. He ain't done enough, and he hasn't shown enough. We all still know him as a striker mm-hmm. and a damn good, accurate pinpoint striker. <laughs> and then, and then, not not to like, you know, debunk what you said or anything. Like, I think I think Sean O'Malley has potential to mm-hmm. be great, right? You know, but but what's holding me back from, you know, saying that he's a he's a great uh, fighter of all time, like right off the bat, is because I need I need to see. What what's he doing like as champion? Because like, is he gonna like do all this side shit? Like you know, get into like these pointless boxing matches, you know, and and so when I I compare that to uh, was Conor McGregor, like Conor McGregor was a double champ, 
in the UFC at one point, and he got like di- distracted with the whole Floyd boxing match. Uh, and I, in my opinion, I feel like that, that hurted his legacy as far as the UFC. But if he had just stuck with the UFC, kept his focus on that, it's a hot take. But I felt like Conor w- had the potential to be a, a, a triple champ for three three weight classes. I think Conor saw the money and, you know, the kind of money that he was seeing, bro, you can't pass up on. The kind no, of no, money, I, especially I, for the boxing match. So yeah. Yeah, I support it. I support that, uh, uh, like, because if you do win that match, the sky's the limit for you even... Even higher, you finna yeah. make so much money, like right. you already this big character. Yeah. But to dial back in on Sean O'Malley, it's like I think he's going. What scares me with him is that he's got the star power and the charisma of like Conor Conor McGregor. But I think he's gonna take the safer route. He's gonna protect his record and try to take like not the best fight he can possibly but take. The fights he on. knows he can win. Exactly. Okay. And I think I he's gonna take that. that safe route and keep trying to build his stock up that way so he can potentially make some Conor McGregor money. Who? You talking about Jones? Oh, my God. Yeah. John Jones, the GOAT. But but while but while he was talking, uh, like, I was trying to think of, like, bantamweights, mm-hmm. like, all-time bantamweight greats. And, like, I think, I think someone like Dominic Cruz – Bantaway wise is the greatest. I think, I think mine has a straw weight if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think yeah. It's a little bit lighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bantaway wise, like I think, um, Dominic Cruz. It, it really could have been Henry Cejudo, but he retired too early. He comes back, and then now he's not the same guy no more. So, yeah, it's a tough. It's a tough pill to swallow, but yeah. Well, somebody else on the card, Dustin Poirier. I think he's definitely going to bounce back from his loss against Justin. I think so, too. Yeah. You know, he's definitely, I think he's, you know, just based off the training videos I've seen, like, this dude's hungry. You know, he wants to get back on track. You know, I think he wins this one. He's hungry? Yeah. What does he get, like, a Whataburger or something? He, he, there's no Whataburger in Louisiana. I think he's a talented fighter. (laughs) I think he, I just seen him go. I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. And, like, I know... When he had fought Connor them a few times, I wanted Connor to win, but he, he laid him like he, he laid him down. Sad, bro. But like that just gave him all the fuel and confidence to yes. show everybody what he really bout, and he went on a little run, and then the, he just you know got just got caught. Yeah, just got caught the just, last just fight. like anybody else. Yeah, know? but I definitely think he gonna bounce back. But it's gonna be a strong pay per view, man. Like Sean O'Malley just mm-hmm. main eventing, and then there's some. Pro year, Peter Yarn's in there whole too. I think Peter Yarn wins too. And, and, um, <clears throat> just that one is currently done. Um, I Gilbert am, bro. Burns. Been a long fucking day, bro. I think Gilbert Burns wins his match, and uh, but the one match aside from the main event, I'm looking forward to is Kevin Holland versus Michael Venom Page, uh-huh. because to me personally, Michael Venom Page should have been with the UFC a long time ago, and the fact that he spent so much time uh, in Bellator. Now in the UFC, and now this is this is our opportunity to say, okay, are you still that guy that everybody was hyping up in Bellator, you know, versus <laughs> versus uh, Kevin Holland? Um, oh man! You know, I personally like Kevin Holland. You know, he's not like, yeah, he's a shit talker, you know, and I, I, you know, he wants to he wants to get back to contending for uh, the division, so. I didn't mean to laugh, man, but like he was Bellator, he was talking a lot of shit and crap. Yeah, he was. That's the thing I was laughing at because he said some of the most craziest things. He did, yeah. <laughs> they can get away with that shit in Bellator, though. What's up? I said they can get away with that shit in Bellator, yeah, though. Bellator. And then also Dada 3000 dying. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not. laughs> Anyway. I think he did that, though. I think I'm excited for the event. <clears throat> we going to watch it here. We might record it. You we know, might go live on TikTok. We might you never go live know. on TikTok. Yeah, check us out. This episode should be up that morning. So look out for us later on in that day. Definitely. Because we definitely. should be showing. We might be live on the City Boys podcast page. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But let's go put on for the city. Let's not forget about the city. You know what I'm saying? ATX, where we from, where Ooh. we reside. We've been doing a lot of food journeys. You know, sure. expanding our palate. 
Yes, sir. Today, me, Edwin, and our boy producer Stoops, you know what I'm saying? We went to go test out some breakfast tacos. Well, I'm not going I'm not going to disclose too much information on it. It's going to be a, a YouTube video and some clips up about it probably this next week, so stay tuned for that. But let's expand on another food I don't even know category. It's a food um Austin's legacy. Well, Central Texas legacy. Yeah, yeah. Barbecue. Barbecue, barbecue exactly. Top tier barbecue here in Central Texas, bro. So, well, who is y'all top? Uh, top three. Top three. Top three Go barbecue ahead, places. Top three. No, I, I'm, def- gonna, I'm gonna categorize this to Austin and Central Texas. So. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Austin and Central okay. Texas. Okay. All right. So, okay, we're, we're starting off with Austin. Um, you definitely, definitely gotta put Franklin's out there. Mm-hmm. You know, you know that way. Are you giving them an order? No order. Order, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, Franklin. You, you Franklin's. You you gotta you gotta have them up there. You know, I remember the first time I went, I was just, yeah, you know, know, I was amazed. You know, like I was just like, holy yeah, shit, eight? amazed. Oh, I was like, damn. <laughs> so I was like, damn. Well, 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 like, hold on, let me. Nah, I'm just well, nah, 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 nah. But uh, my fault. Nah, 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 yeah, and then it, it was it wasn't until that point where like. The whole idea that barbecue is just barbecue <laughs> yeah. is just a, a bullshit statement, you know? Okay, so Franklin's number one. Uh, second, I'm going to have to go with Style Switch, you know? that That's a that's a, a, a spot that, you know, if I want to get some barbecue, but I don't feel like waiting hours in line at Franklin's or whatever, um, you know, that's my favorite. And a hidden gem for three. Not Not too many people know about it. And Freddie knows uh, House Park Barbecue, you know. I remember he introduced me one time uh, when I was at uh, ACC Rio Grande, yeah. and then uh, we decided, you know, we want to get some barbecue. And I, I had never heard of House Park Barbecue until he showed it, uh, introduced me the spot. And yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty decent spot. Now, right now they they're not open because you know temporary renovations. But you know, but as soon as that, you know, that spot's open, you know, that I would definitely recommend it to everyone. So it's an OG spot, bro. I'll give my top three. I'd have to start off with Franklin's. I don't. Yeah, that's that's my clear number one. I think number two and number three, I'm kind of in the mix with. Uh, it would be Snows. Is that is, is that wait, wait, wait. Uh, I thought we were doing Austin. This, like, but he said Austin in Central Texas. Yeah, that's what I was so it, it, can, yeah. it can. So we can do. Oh, man. Well, you would have two snows in there? Yeah. No, nah, you took yeah. it out. You can't go back. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so my number one clear cut Franklin's. I had the best beef rib I've like ever tasted. I didn't even know it could be that amazing there, bro. Right. And then the, the jalapeno cheese sausage was just OP. And then. <laughs> Snows, where is that Lexington? Lexington, Lexington. Snows in yeah. Lexington, probably would be as at right now my number two, is because the like the meat is it's above average. It's it's I, I say the meat is great, no homo, but <laughs> it's the sides that take it over the notch for me. The potato salad is so good, bro. I always get a big ass tub and bring it home. <laughs> and the banana pudding, I always get as many as I can. Like snows, you, I, I love you. And then when I'm in line, you give me a little something to sip on, like sometimes, occasionally. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's so appreciative, free man. Bear, you know, free so snows would be my number two, matter of fact. And then number three, I have to say Interstellar Barbecue. I haven't been, Ooh. but I've been hearing about it. It's a uh, yeah, it, it's my it's 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 the number three that I've had. Like I haven't had anything less. I any that. I wouldn't put them above Snows and Franklin's, but they definitely got potential. That's, that's a very is it is it a spot where like you wait hours in line? Uh, it's not as bad as like waiting at Snows or Franklin's. It's a little bit of a line, but it tends. It depends. It goes fast. It goes yeah. fast. Okay. That's a very good list, Jamir. Very proud of you. Uh, very good list. <clears throat> uh, my number one spot, bro. It snows, bro. I love snows. Oh, I, Franklin's, though? Yes, fuck yes. Oh, Hell yeah. Dang. No hesitation. After you told me 
few years ago or last year. If anything, you tell me it's the other way around. So snows, <laughs> I, I took I took a trip to snows when it was cold and it didn't hit right. But I went again when it was the right weather and it hit. So snows, but snows will always have a place in my heart. Always. Number one. Uh, two, Interstellar. Interstellar is just fucking delicious, bro. It's just oh, so delicious. And then my number three, bro. <clears throat> man. I'm going to go with Tito, man. Style Switch, bro. I love Style Switch. So you're not even putting Franklin's no, Franklin's no, top no. three? No, no, sir. What did they do to you? Look, Franklin's, is, saying, Franklin's like... is good for just ribs, bro. I want to have the whole fucking meal. But did you not hear me just... No, homo. Brag on a sausage? Like the jalapeno <laughs> cheddar. The jalapeno cheddar sausage was the best I ever ate on. You know what I'm saying? Like I had Snow's jalapeno cheddar. Bleh. I had Snow's jalapeno cheddar sausage. And it was good as hell. The thing is, bro, Frank. But it wasn't even in the ballpark. Like, I didn't even know how good it can get until I had Frank. There's a reason why Texas, uh, my bad. Um, in the Texas Monthly, Franklin's been dropping every year. There's a reason why. It Which just, is cool. And it, no, it, just, it, doesn't, it just doesn't hit for me. Like, I do love the beef rib. The beef rib is absolutely, it's, it's absolutely undefeated, for sure. But that's the only thing that I keep going back for. I, I, if I want brisket... I'd rather go to Lexington for snows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if I want a good casual vibe, good casual stuff, Interstellar Style Switch. But but as much as I like Style Switch, bro, you know, it, it doesn't compare to Franklin's. But the, you know, I just, I just, especially the brisket. I feel it. But I just I just don't fuck with Franklin's like that no more, bro. Like <laughs> Franklin's was my true number one. I'm like, okay, this is real barbecue now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But then I started exploring. I went to Snows. I went to the number one spot, Goldie's, Interstellar. You know what I'm saying? You know, shout out to them boys down at Goldie's on the number one spot, bro. That shit, that shit is delicious. But it's just Franklin's lacking something, bro. But like I said, the ribs and the beef rib, undefeated. Mm-hmm. I'll give them that. But I'm just not going to put them top three. Well, before we end this topic, I just want to clarify my answer. I thought we were doing... Austin top three and then Central Texas top three, so the the names I I said for my top three was just specifically Austin. But if we want to expand, you definitely got to hit up Goldies and you definitely got to hit up Snows. Arguably the top ten, however you want to order it, mm-hmm. top ten barbecue places in Texas. Now, real quick, just give me some quick names on overrated places here. Bill Miller's Rudy's. I remember uh, Hey, thank you. Uh, Terry Black's Rudy's is ass. <laughs> Rudy's is ass. <laughs> yes. All right, give me your top three real quick, then. Rudy's, uh, Terry Blacks. Uh, like if it's not if it's not the original, Terry Blacks is a, is a you know overrated barbecue. Oh, sorry and uh, he just made me remember that. And that uh, Bill Miller's that, for that, sure. That place, man. Now, now to give a quick you know quick take on Bill Miller's, I remember when I used to work at Bill Miller's. You know, back in the gap when I was nineteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to think that their barbecue was great, you know, and then I had Franklin's and then it just made me feel ashamed for me even thinking about that, you know, (laughs) so I can never forgive myself for saying that Bill Miller's was great barbecue, you know, and like, thanks to y'all, I even went and went to try these barbecue places because like before, like the only barbecue I would eat is home cooked barbecue, which is amazing, by the way. Shout out to Pops, you know what I'm saying? But I and Bill Miller's and all, and that's barbecue. That was barbecue for me. And then I hear y'all when we would link up, y'all would bring up these names, and I'm like, my pops always told me he was like, hey, you, if you ever get the chance, go try Franklin's, go try Snows and stuff like that. So when y'all was doing, it, I was like, you know what? It may be a little opportunity now, maybe opportunity. And when I tried it, I did not know. Barbecue could even be that damn good. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. You be moaning. <laughs> yeah, you be sitting there. Just take that first bite. Oh. Hey. City Boys Barbecue. Hey. <laughs> Shit, we gotta yeah. learn how to cook it, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Well, I know. You know. You know. I got a little something, yeah. but I ain't. I ain't fucking with Franklin's in them right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. What about you, Edwin? Man, Black's is ass. Terry Black's is ass. Like you said, it was not the original spot. Don't even recommend that place to yeah. me. Rudy's is garbage. The driest shit I've Absolutely. ever seen. Sorry. It, disgusting. And then um, 
You know what, bro? Coopers too. Coopers. If it's not the OG Coopers, mm-hmm. I never it's, had it's, Coopers. It's bad. It's bad. I don't like Coopers. No, no. For me, with Rudy's, you know, obviously, if I want barbecue, Rudy's is not gonna be the first place that comes in mind, you know. But mm-hmm. you know, where I work at, you know, every Friday, you know, they like to feed everybody. And here and there, they'll do Rudy's. You know, at that point, I'll eat it. You know, because I'm not paying for it. You know, right, you know. otherwise, you know, otherwise, I'll be pissed <laughs> off. You know, it's like that dude from Snow said we met out there one time. He's like, "Look, if you give me shit for free, I'm still oh, gonna yeah. eat that shit. I'm still gonna <laughs> eat that shit because it's free. Because it's free. <laughs> nah, yeah. That's what he was talking about with barbecue. Like, you give me shit, I'm still gonna eat that because it's free. Yeah, I remember you know what I'm that. Saying? So shout out to that boy. Man, the since we. Since we tried breakfast tacos earlier today, and Rudy's sells breakfast tacos, that shit ass. Like, don't never, even add that had. to your palate. Like, don't, don't. You, you ain't even got BBQ right. Yeah, they no, even no, try no. to throw a, some, throw the brisket on some, some I, undercooked, I will, I, watery <laughs> eggs, bro. I will give this to the viewers. Like, if this is your first time going to barbecue, and people do put put you on like on Terry Black's on Barn Springs. Mm-hmm. That's cool because that's typically what happens. Or that Green Mesquite plays down in Barn Springs too. That's cool. That will be your first introduction but just know that there's better. Don't settle for just that. Don't yeah. don't be out here telling other people that this is the best barbecue nah, yeah. ever. Because you're you're, you're, you're you're fucking wrong. Like yeah. it's, it's good. You're trying to get to find barbecue and not the piece of bullshit around here, boy. It's good for your first time. <laughs> it's good for your first time but that's it, bro. No, no, no. Going back, because we brought up breakfast tacos, I'll give Bill Miller's credit. You know, they do got Bill some Miller. nice... Hey, hey. They do got some nice breakfast tacos. I got you never, know. Had him, never had them, so I can't say them you know. got some. Bill Miller's do got nah. some pressure, you feel me? You know, if I ever go to Bill Miller's, it's for the breakfast tacos, you know? No, so, th- if anything, I'll recommend that, but no, just don't get the barbecue, you know? And that's it. Episode 9. We got another one down. Shout out to the city. Keep staying locked in with us. Keep staying engaged. We want to make this content for you and keep making it better for you. Thank you for watching. Again, thank you guys so much for following us and keeping in touch with us. We're definitely going to be dropping some more content soon. All right, yes, sir. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe on our YouTube channel and hit the notification button. And be sure to follow us on all the other uh, social media platforms. And to my boy Riley and any other Denver Broncos fan watching this, Broncos country, let's ride. City boys, we out.